you're playing somebody who seems much older than you are. Is it actually difficult playing old? Increasingly less. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd had then what I have now. I, I'm suffering from vertigo. I've been suffering for it for eight months, which is why no, you see oh, me walking really? so carefully up the stairs. Yeah, I'm permanently dizzy. It will go away, I've been guaranteed. I've seen seven doctors, and I'm, wow. I'm now in the hands of a professor of neurology in London. And he, they've all said it will go away. I was doing my exercises in the dressing room before coming out here. Um, and it does make me feel a little fragile, and that would have been great for this. But you know, I've, is I've, it caused by some inner ear thing? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's inner mm. ear and eyes and eyesight. And we are trying to repro literally reprogram certain little aspects of my brain, who, when they receive signals from my eyes and my ears and my body, it doesn't make sense. Wow. I mean, this is probably yes. too much information. But um, it's uh, not for me, because my father has, has, is dealing with something like that. Really? Yes. It's amazing how many people have. I mean, almost mm. everybody I talk to says, oh, yes, I have a brother, a cousin, yeah. my wife. Uh, but it's know. great to know it will pass. It, it, they're all saying it will go away. And mm. it's not something which has got a terminal cause attached to it. You know, mm. I'm, I don't have a cancer or anything mm. like that. Um, but it's, it's unpleasant. The only good thing is that it goes away when I'm horizontal, so I sleep beautifully. Mm -hmm. And when I drive, and I love driving, I'm a huh. passionate driver. Mm. And, and so I can get in my car and I'm no longer dizzy. Mm. I can That's drive anywhere at any speed. I've even been on a racetrack driving and oh. I'm just, everything is. So, and the, the doctors are fascinated. They're trying to find out why driving doesn't make yeah. me dizzy, but it doesn't. Anyway, that was a, so, so when a little you, detour. When you played old, uh, how do you do that? Or what were the things that you, you thought about? Well, um, one of the fun things about being an actor is that nothing is wasted on you, nothing at all. Um, I'm sure you know the, the thing we have called sense memory. Mm. You use it. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful, and I, was taught sense memory when I was at drama school, along with all the time, place, weather stuff. And um, I mean, the other day, I have arthritis. And uh, I, I, uh, I went to see my hand therapist. Yeah, there are people called hand therapists. Mm. And she said, look, <laughs> I think the point has arrived. We need, we, I'd like to give you some injections. Mm. And I said, injections? And she said, yeah, um, you need eight. You need f four in each hand. And I said, oh. And the first one in, into the knuckles, into here, you know, hurt so badly, I thought I was going to pass God. out. And then she did the second one, and that wasn't any better, except that I knew what was coming. And, and I, I, I was ready to say to her, I, I, can't, I can't take this. And then the sense memory kicked in, and I said to myself, come on, Patrick, this is a great opportunity. Don't waste it. You're, you're experiencing quite excruciating pain, um, which, which you could stop, but you're choosing not to. And it may possibly be beneficial. It was actually beneficial, yes. Not so much as marijuana has been beneficial. <laughs> no, I, I'm, yeah. I'm very serious. I'm, I mean, I'm on record. I've gone public about this. Mm. I'm signed up for medical marijuana mm. here in California. Mm. And um, I couldn't do that two years ago. I could only do that. Now I can do this, and that's medical marijuana. Um, sprays and chewies. People are afraid to applaud, but you can feel free. So. <laughs> um, oh, wow. <laughs> so, um, so everything gets stored away. Every experience gets stored away. You have this huge bank account with files in it, you know, and you can reference files and pull these memories up, these sense memories. And so I have memories of my parents when they were elderly, of my eldest brother, who is now dead, of how he was. And as I get older, I become increasingly fascinated by old people. Um, I watch them a lot. I try to observe mm. them you know, without attracting mm. attention. Um, there are so many wonderful, extraordinary, and sad details about aging. And, and, um, 
and then project myself into what will I be doing in 20 years' time. Charles was spent to, supposed to be 90, mm. um, so he's a bit older than me. Mm. And uh, um, it's one of the things about the job that I absolutely love is exploring the what ifs. What if this happened to me? What if that happened to me? How would it feel? How would I behave? Who would, who would I be? Mm. Who, who might I become? It's all so damned interesting. Mm. And then you, hopefully in a truthful context and in an appropriate context for whatever the job is that you're doing, you communicate it to an audience. What was the toughest thing about that role? The Louisiana heat and humidity. Oh. Mm. It was mm. brutal. I'd never experienced anything like it. Oh. We don't have weather like that in the UK. And uh, it was mm, May, June that I was shooting all of my scenes. Mm. And uh, uh, Hugh and I and a brilliant child actress called Daphne Keene, who if you haven't seen the movie, mm. see it just for her mm. because she's exceptional. We spent days in this damned ancient truck driving up and down mm. and up and down the highway shooting s long scenes inside mm. the truck. And the heat was very difficult. Wow. They didn't air condition it just for you. They couldn't. Um, th there was air conditioning in the truck, but it didn't reach the back seat where I was. Oh, the other great. two were in the front. And anyway, they couldn't have it on because of the noise. Mm. And so uh, we just sweated it out. But, but we had great fun.